Hi, welcome to another quick tip from Think Creative TV. Hope that you enjoy this, and if you do, it'd be great if you could subscribe and click the like button below. But let's get started with our tip of the day. So just today, um, Apple have released an update to iWork and the suite of apps. So I'm gonna just jump in and take a look at just some of the updates to Keynote that will hopefully add to the experience of what you can do with Keynote as a creativity tool. So let's just jump into Keynote now and take a look. So I've just been playing around with some of these. Um, the first thing you notice when you first go into Keynote now is it opens in this edit mode, uh, sorry, in this uh, view mode. Um, so edit is where I now go to if I want to change anything. But what this means is I can now move this slide around without fear of moving anything on the screen. So that's actually just a really, really nice touch, probably something that you didn't realize that you needed, um, but actually is, is a really nice thing to do, especially in the world of us now doing online presentations as such. It means I can actually you know present from this view, know what's coming up next on my slides, so it just changes the way that we can kind of interact with it. And I'm sure as, as I kind of play with this more, I'll see some a lot more uses for it. But I want to kind of dive into some of the, the really neat features of the things that you can do with this. So I'm going to start with this. Um, it's really crazy bizarre that um, I was trying to work this little presentation of a roller coaster for, for something that I'm doing um, in a couple of weeks time. And I wanted to get my little emoji in the roller coaster cart to go down and up the, the slope. And it was getting a little bit frustrating because I could make it travel in a line. And, and I'll go into that now and sort of show the show the issues. If I click on um, and I go to animate, um, I could build it in. Uh, sorry. I can add an action um, and I could create a path and I was creating a path to sort of, you know, travel down. Oops, I'm a bit dodgy in the first place. And then if it went back up the slope like this, and I've not done it very neatly, but if I just you know play that, you'll see that, you know, I'm still facing down even though I'm heading up. So actually what's really, really neat with this is if I click back on that motion path now and tap on a line to path, you'll see instantly my character is now facing up. So now if I play that through, you see without really having to do too much, and I know he's a, a bit wobbly and if I'd taken time to do it a bit smoother, it's actually gonna follow the path and stay sort of facing forwards along that path. Now, it, it's again, seems like a really, really simple thing, but actually for your young learners, that's now giving them a whole new world of animation, whole new way to get things to move across and look more realistic because it's actually gonna follow the path it's actually taking as opposed to just you know dropping and then having to go down at a right angle or whatever it might be. So. Really, really neat touch, um, and I'm thinking so many applications for this going forward. Second one, which again, really, really huge benefit, um, is the ability for videos to go across slides. So it used to be that you would have a video on this slide. If I change the slide, the video automatically stops playing. Um, and if, I'm, if, if I want to have that continuity in my slide deck, it, it can be a bit annoying. So with this one now, if I add in a new slide, Let's just take a blank slide and I'll keep it white so you can see what I mean by this. I'm going to copy this video and I'm going to paste it onto this slide. And I'm actually going to make it smaller and put it into a different position. Okay. Um, and now if I play this slide through and start that timer going, if I now click on the slide, you see that the timer stays going at the same speed. I've not had to do anything. Um, and actually in this case, the video with a timer on it works perfectly well as an idea of this, you know, I might want that timer in the top right hand corner on all of my slides to show the time that's being counted down for an activity that I might be doing. So that works really, really nicely. And I really haven't had to do anything for that to happen. And the last really, really quick update that I just wanted to go through, um, we know that it's great to put pictures into things, um, but it's also great to be able to put captions and titles onto things. And that's just been made a whole lot easier. If I tap on the picture itself and tap on the paintbrush, I now have the option down here to go title and caption, and I can turn on the title and turn on the caption, and I can just simply add those things in. So again, just giving that accessibility to your pictures for people that, that might need that accessibility option, I can now add those directly into a presentation and, and develop how my presentation works. I'm sure there's loads of other updates within here that I, as I continue to play with, I will find, but definitely have a go at those three and think of lots of ideas. And I'd love to see you leave some comments uh, below as to how you might think about using these fantastic updates in your own teaching and learning.